Hey folks, it's Finn. Today I'm going to share a bit about anxiety. Lots of people use the word anxiety when they often just mean nervous. I'm talking anxiety as a mental health condition that seriously impacts your ability to live your daily life. I've had anxiety for as long as I can remember and I'm also diagnosed with anxious avoidant personality disorder. And this means that I'm socially anxious all of the time. I live with a kind of low level rumbling background sense of anxiety no matter what state I'm in. And it also means that my default position <laughs> is to want to run and hide from it. I have tried that approach and it didn't work. The only way to change anxiety is to face it. It doesn't necessarily mean it goes because mine hasn't gone completely. But what it means is I've learned hacks to be able to live my life despite my anxiety. So I thought today I would share with you some of my favorite anxiety hacks. Wah! So the first step in challenging social anxiety is to get out of the house, which is often easier said than done. And this is where virtual support is really, really useful. For example, I have a few friends who I know I can trust I won't feel ashamed if I'm struggling and are available during the day so that if I'm out, if I do get stuck or need some reassurance, whatever, I can message them, ring them and they'll just be there to reassure or just distract me or whatever else I need. Using public transport is another huge anxiety issue. It's often the bane of my life. And for this, I've really found it useful to have a comfort or a distraction item and that can be any of a million things. Anything you can carry with you that will make you feel relaxed, soothed, reassured. Now for those that know me you will know that I carry this fella around with me everywhere, Lammy Cat. I've always got a bag on my back, he's always in it. I'm very very tactile, I find touching and being touched very soothing. And so if I'm struggling, I simply put my hand in my rucksack and rub his ear and it just chills me out. Now, I used to feel embarrassed about this, but you know what? If it gets me out of the house, if it means I can challenge my social anxiety and just get on as normal, who cares? Now, of course, it doesn't have to be a stuffed toy, but if it is, please send me pictures of it. It could be anything. It could be clothes you're comfortable in, maybe a nice big soft jumper or a particularly soft t-shirt or a really nice scarf you can fiddle with or a game on your phone or those little fidget spinners. Dealing with mental health is all about getting to know what works for you so experiment with things that make you feel soothed and comforted. A side effect of my anxiety is I get a very high sensory overload. The more anxious I get the more high I get. People just think I'm really like bubbly. Actually it's anxiety. What happens is when I'm anxious, noises get louder, colours are brighter and it's just all too much at once. Everything floods in and I just, I don't really know what I'm doing. I can be quite dizzy. I bump into stuff. It is amusing and I've learned to see the funny side of it, but it has got a basis in anxiety. And one of the worst ways that this manifests is on crossing roads which is a problem. I use crossings as much as possible because it's just easier than trying to watch the traffic, watch people, listen and see, it's just too much. So I use crossings, but sometimes it doesn't make a noise or the green man doesn't show and all of that business and you start worrying. And a couple of years ago, I discovered the most amazing hack, secret crossing buttons. Now these are actually designed for the visually or hearing impaired. On the button box, at the very bottom underneath, you'll find a cone, it's either plastic or metal, and it just sticks out a little bit underneath. And when the traffic lights go red, this starts spinning. So if you hold onto the bottom of it, you get a sensory signal from this thing that it's safe to cross. And I find using that so much easier because I can just lower my gaze, gather myself, calm myself down, hold onto that, and it just means I'm not looking at anything else, I'm just purely focusing on this button, and as soon as it starts spinning, then I can check around me, everything's okay, and cross. Not all crossings have them, but I do make a point of finding ones that do in my local area so that when I have really high anxiety days, I can cross a road safely. 
Finding a way around is another huge anxiety trigger, especially in new places, new appointments. I just really find that bit so stressful. What I actually used to do, if I had an appointment somewhere I hadn't been before, a few days beforehand, I would make the journey, make sure I could get there, so that when the actual day itself came around, then I could make it and be less anxious. It was a bit of a palaver. Thank God for technology, because Google Map has made such a difference to my ability to get outside and to navigate social spaces, find where I'm going, reassure myself, and not have to do this traveling two days beforehand just to check. And then it gives you a breakdown how long it takes you to get there, whether you're walking, train, public transport, car, all of that is amazing because it reassures me because I know how much time it's gonna to take to get there. And then as I'm walking, it also helps as a distraction because I can not focus on what's around me and panicking, am I on the right street? I simply watch the arrow and follow it. Such a simple hack that makes so much difference to lowering that anxiety so that it's easier to be outside and to get to places. Crowds, of course, people in general are a difficult part of anxiety. And for this, I use headphones, but not to listen to music. I actually get more anxious and paranoid if I'm walking and listening to music because I can't tell who's around me. I can't hear and I'm, I'm worried if somebody says something to me and I don't hear them and it just fire, fires off even more anxiety. So I actually use them as just a signal not to talk to me. So if I'm at a bus stop, I always get someone to say, hello, I want to talk. I don't want that half the time, especially if I'm anxious. So I stick them in my ears and then people tend not to talk to me. It's a bit of a cheeky hack, but it works. If I really am on one of those days where it's like, please don't talk to me, just stick them in. No one knows any different. Meditation apps are another reason I carry my headphones. I meditate, it's one of the best things I've ever learned to do for my anxiety. Having a daily meditation practice really trains you in being able to recognize when your thoughts are racing, calm that down, calm your breathing down. When you're outside, you can then draw on it to cope. I use Buddhify when I'm out and about, which is an amazing app, which has got meditations for everything possible, whether it's a guided meditation, whether it's dealing with difficult emotions, whether it's feeling stressed, you can just tap into one of these, pop it on, and it's anything from a minute to half an hour to an hour. Choose the small ones, just take five minutes out of your time just to chill out a bit. Safe spaces are very, very important when you're in a crowd as well. Having somewhere you know that you feel safe that you can go to. So for example, here in Eastbourne, mine is the local library. It's a big one because it's always quiet in there. Worst case scenario, I can just dash in there for five minutes and sit and read a book. I do have cafes that I know very well and feel very secure and happy and comfortable in. But if my anxiety is very high and I just actually can't even go to the counter and ask for a coffee, then somewhere like the library is so much nicer because it's just, just go in there, no one has to speak. In fact, the rule is don't speak. Perfect. Worst case scenario, I've even been known to use a public toilet. Just to go into the toilet, sit for five minutes, calm myself down where I'm locked away from the world, no one can get to me. I can even use that moment to then put my headphones into my ear, listen to like a three minute track of Buddhify to calm myself down, maybe go on my phone and message the virtual support that I'd set up beforehand. Just that time out means you can regather and then get on with what you need to do. By far the most important anxiety hack is self-kindness. That might sound airy fairy, fluffy wuffy, but it's so important because I do this myself when I'm really anxious, my little inner critic will start going, what are you being anxious about? You're only outside, nothing's wrong with you, what's the matter? On and on and on, and the more it goes on, then I start telling it off and tell myself off, and before I know it, my head's a mess, my heart's up in the blooming skies, and I'm on my way back home. It's really important to be gentle. How would you treat somebody else that had this much anxiety? You treat them kindly, so treat yourself in the same way as well. Remind yourself that there's never any reason to feel ashamed. Having a mental health problem is no different than having a broken leg. It's something that has happened to our body and we're taking care of ourselves the best way we can. Worst case scenario, if you're outside and it's all too much and you've tried all these different hacks and nothing is working, it's fine, go home. Don't berate yourself, you've got outside. Congratulate yourself, it's a step forward. I hope that helped. If you've got other hacks to add to that, other tools, things that help you, please do leave them in the comments below. It's really helpful to everybody else and to me because I'm always learning new ways and always grateful to learn new ways to manage these things. You're always welcome to message me as well. If I can be of any help, send any links your way. If you drop me a message over on my website, that's probably the best option because it goes straight to my inbox. 
always happy to help where I can because as they say, a problem shared is a problem halved. Thanks for watching everybody. The next video you see up will be my 10,000 subscribers celebratory vlog. So keep your eye out for that. And if you like what you see, please do hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the regular installments. Bye bye.